everyone, I'm Deb and I'm a dog trainer and performer here at Perina Farms located just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Over the last month, Perina Farms has received a lot of questions on raising a new puppy or a newer dog that you've just added to your family or a new puppy or a new dog that you're going to be adding to your family. So when your new puppy or your new dog arrives in your new home, I'm here to help you set him or her up for success. I'd like to take a few moments to introduce myself. I'm from Holderness, New Hampshire. It's a little town that some of you might have seen in a movie that was made in the 80s called On Golden Pond. I've owned multiple different types of animals my whole life and in the past 10 years focused mainly on dogs. I'm a breeder of Icelandic sheepdogs and I'm active in the National Icelandic Sheepdog Rescue Alliance, but I also work with other rescues and foster regularly. I currently have seven Icelandic sheepdogs and three mixes. I have multiple dogs that have titles in agility, herding, tricks, and rally, to name a few. My first love, though, is flying disc, and I just can't get enough. When I'm not on the disc field, I can be found in the woods or somewhere around a body of water, all of which normally includes dogs. So our first question that I want to address is, how do I choose the right puppy or dog? Well, first and foremost, you should look at your lifestyle and think of what type of dog would fit. Big dog, small dog. Long hair, short hair. High energy, low energy. Temperament, grooming, what, what is going to be required for grooming. What exercise requirements are also going to be important. Those are things that you really want to research. So you have a better idea of the time requirement and space that might be required for your next pet. Next, you need to decide where to look for your new puppy. Will you visit an animal shelter or a rescue to adopt your new dog? Perhaps you will seek out a responsible breeder. Research is essential throughout all of this process. Don't just go by looks, although cuteness gets us every time. Don't make an impulse decision. Take time to find the right puppy for your family and your lifestyle. So next, how should I puppy proof my home? This is super important. You wanna to get to your puppy's level. Down by the floor, you'll find things like electrical cords, breakable items, potential toxins like plants. These should be placed completely out of the reach of the puppy. Puppies can jump, climb, chew, scratch, so you wanna make sure everything that is important to you and dangerous to them is put up high. Puppy gates also can be called baby gates. Those can be super helpful for keeping your puppy out of mischief. And crate training your puppy is a good way to make sure they're not getting in into trouble when you leave them alone. And it's also a great place for them to call their own. I typically feed a puppy when I have one in their, its crate, so it creates a happy space for them. They want to go into their crate. When I leave them for a period of time, I'll leave them something to occupy themselves, like an interactive toy filled with treats. What should I feed my puppy and how often should I feed my puppy? First and foremost, choose a 100% complete and balanced food that is specifically for growth and development, like Purina Pro Plan Puppy that also has DHA to nourish the brain and help with vision development. You should take into account your puppy's breed size. A small breed puppy matures at a faster rate and has different nutritional needs compared to a large or giant breed puppy. You may wanna look for a puppy food with small bite-sized kibble for your small puppy or a formula that's made with natural sources of glucosamine for your large breed puppy. Normally, your puppy should get three smaller meals a day until they're about six months old. You should keep track of your puppy's weight and make sure they're getting enough, or on the flip side, that you aren't feeding them too much. It's best to feed to ideal body condition where you can see a visible waste. When should I switch my puppy to adult food? You should start feeding your puppy an adult food once he reaches maturity. Most pu puppies reach maturity when they are about a year old, but some larger and giant breeds might take up to 24 months. This is a good thing to consult with your veterinarian. What can I do to help my puppy with house training? Okay, first thing, all puppies are different. Some take longer to house train than others. Patience and positivity go a long way in getting your puppy and getting your puppy on a routine. This can help them a lot. Crate train your puppy. Most puppies will not potty in a small crate. Some crates will come with a divider to make the crate smaller. Then as your puppy grows, you can remove that divider. They will also make a commotion most of the time so that you know that they need to go outside and go potty. After a meal, a nice walk is a perfect way for your puppy to get some exercise and also stimulate a bowel movement. A way to train them to ask to go out, you can hang bells on your door handle and when, they and when you walk through the door, take the puppy's paw, bang the bells. This will help train the puppy to tell you when they need to go out. They ring the bells. Overall, for potty training, patience and a consistent routine are the keys to success. 
But remember, they are little and they have little bladders. It can take a while for them to learn to go potty outside. Additionally, as puppies are learning the ropes of acceptable behavior, food can serve as a powerful motivator to reinforce positive training techniques. To help make the puppy successful, you can gate off portions of the house so they won't go running off and have an accident. How much should I play with my puppy? Puppies will tire differently. It depends on the puppy. If you have an active puppy, then you can play short games with them four to five times a day. Games like fetch are super ways to get your puppy engaged with you and start creating that bond that will last a lifetime. I like to teach my puppies their name. The day that I get them, I call it the name game. I say their name when they look at me, I click, give them a treat. I'm looking for eye contact when we do that. So I say their name, they look at me, I click and then I give them a treat. After a few sessions of this, then I will do, do it when they are distracted and most times they will come running to me. This is the first session of learning a good solid recall also, not just learning their names. Which I feel recall is the most important thing that any dog can have. High reward treats while doing the name game and recall practice will help, get, help you to get the puppy really engaged with you. When should I start training my puppy? Right away. Puppies need to have things to do and be busy. Teaching your puppy to sit, lay down, and come when called are great training items to start with. Acclimating your puppy to a collar, leash, harness, and loose leash walking are also very important. What should I do if my puppy is in exhibiting inappropriate behavior? Get your puppy's attention. While they're doing what is inappropriate, you want to redirect them and distract that inappropriate behavior into something that is more positive, like tugging on a toy or playing fetch with a ball. Just distract whatever the unacceptable behavior is. Use an upbeat, high-pitched voice and say, good boy, and reward him with calm petting or a treat, if appropriate. When should I start socializing my puppy? They need to see and experience a lot of different things positively at a very early age. So start socializing in a controlled, happy, and positive way as soon as you can. This will help your puppy to be able to act accordingly to different situations. Things that you can do for socialization include car rides, sounds, people of all sizes, colors, ages, hats, sunglasses, wheelchairs, stores, elevators, and doors that open automatically. This is also important for your rescue dog. It is important for any dog to be able to go out into public and act as a well-behaved dog and not have a reaction to anything that is new to them. But also please note that your young dog will go through fear periods as they grow, which are essentially times when your puppy is extremely sensitive to bad experiences. Your dog may become spooked about certain things that don't normally bother him. They react towards things in the environment and this is normal. As long as you are cheerful and don't make a big deal of the problem, it will pass on its own and you'll have your familiar happy-go-lucky companion back in two to three weeks. What are some good toys that you should buy your puppy? Well, that really depends on your puppy. You can get some stuffies, tug toys, balls, but it really depends on what your puppy likes. Interactive toys that hold food are always a good way to give your puppy some mental stimulation. I personally stay away from toys that are either too small for the breed of dog I have or are made of rope or rawhide, all of which can cause a choking hazard. How should I introduce my puppy to my older dog? When I bring a new puppy home, I start with both dogs outside and I go for a nice leash walk. I, this actually requires another person to help me do that. But this way you can go for a walk, they can see and sniff each other, the older dog does not have you, the new dog in his home. I watch the interaction very carefully between the two to make sure that there are no signs of fear or aggression in either of the dogs. Then I'll take the new dog in the house, let them see their new surroundings. Before I've done this though, I've picked up the other dog's toys and bowl and anything like that, that my other dog, it's theirs. And then once the new pup has looked around, I will have my other dog come in and I'll monitor their interactions together. I always try to remember that a puppy is a lot of jumpy, bitey energy and some older dogs don't really appreciate that and don't tolerate it that well. So crate training is a good way for them to get a break from each other. How should I introduce my new puppy to my child? The best way to introduce your puppy or your new dog is to let the dog or a puppy approach the child. If your child is too excited, you can have them sit in a chair, allowing the puppy to come up to your child. This is, this is so that it's done on the puppy's or dog's own terms. 
Once the puppy's close enough, you can tell your child to offer out clo a closed fist so the dog can sniff it. A closed fist eliminates any possible nipped fingers. When your dog is comfortable, you can ask your child to gen gently stroke their neck or under their chin or on their sides. Al always avoid sensitive areas like ears, tails, feet, and stomach. Sometimes it's a good idea to introduce dogs and ch children outside so your puppy doesn't feel trapped. Alternatively, if you're introducing at home, choose a large room with a relaxed atmosphere that will allow your dog plenty of space to move away if they want to. Thank you for watching Puppy 101.